Well, I'd like to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas and hope everybody had a great big day. Uh, we've got the new year coming up, so I'm going to go ahead and wish you a, a, uh, a happy new year as well. And hopefully this upcoming year you'll have more opportunities to get out and be on the water. So we had our big front blow in this past week. It changed things dramatically for us, as even so much to the point where Texas Parks and Wildlife shut down the bays and the systems uh, in different parts of the uh, up and down our coastlines for a couple of days. And as always, the thing is we've had some of our water temps got all the way down into the to the mid-30s, which is extremely dangerous if you're out in that. Uh, so, and it's tough on the fish as well. So that's why they had to shut all that kind of stuff down. So uh, we have rebounded nicely back into our our 50s and 60s, which is a great thing. And it's, uh, you know, our bays and system have warmed back up. The few days that we got to fish last week, uh, we got into some of these areas like Mustang up here. So all this area in here, again, this time of year, you're really wanting to find mud, grass, clump shell, any, any types of areas like that where you've got uh, deeper edges or guts or maybe even a channel that's adjacent to a flat that has that type of structure on it. This is the stuff that you really want to fish, especially, you know, it just kind of reiterated to us and reaffirmed to us as well as uh, those days leading up to that front coming in. You know, each day that we fished, as we got closer to it, got the fishing got better and better and better. Uh, you know, three days out, it was, it was pretty consistent. Two days out, it was pretty active. The day of that the front was moving in that morning was was... Uh, a little slow to begin with, but as we proceeded through the day and the process of the day of fish catching, uh, that you could see that the, the opportunities were there and they were catching up as we got closer as that front continued to, to approach us. So uh, fishing right up to the, to the point of when it's really close, if you can do that safely, that's a great opportunity for you to find your really quality fish at some point or catch a lot of good fish at a point, which is what's, what was happening for us. So uh, these areas up here, like Mustang, it's got the structure like the, the mud, the clump shell. It's got some a little bit of scattered grass. It doesn't have as much grass in it as we've had in the past, but it's got two of the main uh, of the main three things that you want. So lots of mud, scattered shell that's in here. So you want to be able to fish in and around that kind of stuff this time of year. Uh, you've got a deep channel. You've got the ICW that runs out of the mouth right down in front of that so you have that opportunity you can fish up and down that edge that's in there you can get back here there's some a couple of little back lakes that come off this this uh, big back lake here uh, that go back up into it you can get up into that and fish that but that's going to be a later day thing especially if you're coming off some really cold air like we just had uh, so something to to think about and be aware of so you where you'd want to start your day if you're fishing you know sun up a little later uh, you may even want to consider delaying your fishing trips till the sun gets up just a little bit, you know, 8, 9 o'clock before you begin your day just to help allow the water to warm just a hair uh, is always helpful. It's beneficial to you. Uh, this big flat that's out here on the ICW side, a lot of mud on it, but you've got a deep channel there. So fish that edge. Fish if, if, Whether it's up in this area or further south or further north, whatever. If you fish the ICW or, or the ditches, what some people call it, it's uh, an area, especially when the water's cold, that those fish can drop off to. They can acclimate, and they can get comfortable there until the shallower water warms up and allows them to get up there to feed more properly. So it gives you opportunities to get out here and fish. Maybe you may be, be in waste or belly deep water throwing out to, you know, six, seven foot of water, maybe even a little bit deeper. You can even fish it off your boat if you so choose. Uh, just get on your trolling motor and work down the edge of it really slow. Just kind of to pay attention to what your weather's doing, how much wind you've got, and stuff like that. So baits really has gotten scarce uh, prior to these these big fronts that have come in here, especially the one that just left us. Uh, there was a lot of bait in the system, and now it's, it's gone deep, and it's kind of scared, scattered out. So it's really scarce. So finding a little bit of a bait source somewhere in these estuaries is a key thing, so make sure you find that. Uh, the baits that we've been using primarily, we've been using the down south in uh, the original and burner size shad. We've been using a, a knock and tail in both the uh, four inch and three and a quarter size. No, no particular color, uh, just something that's got some movement, some flash to it, just depending on what your water clarity is. I've uh, been throwing the uh, soft dine, the soft dine XLs. Those have both been very productive. And then the uh, Paul Brown original. So that's been a very good bait for us here leading up to those fronts and after. Now, uh, 
continue to work these areas. Make sure you factor in your majors and minors because that's been, been very key, especially working up to when those fronts are coming in. Up here in Carlos, all the fingers here, up here on the back side of Dunham Island, uh, down this shoreline here, back in this little flat area here. This is where the, where the old intercoastal went through at one point in time. So you've got some deep channel, some, some uh, deep water that's through here. Be careful if you're gonna if you wade around this. You got shell that's on one side, big old shell bar that's there. And if you've been up there when the water's really dropped out, so that's one thing that's also happened as well. Uh, this big old front finally pushed the water out of here, so we're finally getting closer to uh, almost having that negative tide. So when the when the lower tides come, you start to see stuff that you typically would not have seen on the, in the past few weeks when we've had all this higher water in here. But there's a big shell bar that's on this on this east side of this cut and then there's another shell bar that's on the on the west side of that cut so both sides are very weightable uh, one side's got a little bit more mud than the other one side's got a lot more shell than the other so you just kind of have to pick and choose on where you want to be but the one thing that you need to be aware of if you're going to fish on this edge out here early make sure you don't get too close to that thing because it really drops off 17 to 18 feet through there and people don't really realize how deep that channel is so you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble if you get too close to it so it's not just a just a like a sharp edge drop but it's a it's a gradual drop to a point and then all of a sudden boom it drops off so just be aware of your of your water levels on your body as you're wading some of these areas uh, again what i mentioned earlier is, is the bait has gotten really scarce after this big cold front that's pushed in here so it's still going to take our, you know, we've rebounded a little pretty good for a little bit there for temperatures to come back up. But it's going to take a few more days for that temperatures to really rebound and get our water temps back up uh, to what's really comfortable for what those fish and what the bait fish really want to do. So what you're going to really need to do is fish these deeper edges like this off right up out here behind Dunham Island uh, up in that mud later in the day as the sun begins to bake on it. Because we're going to be going high, high pressure that's going to be in place here for a few days. So that one thing that you need to really consider is make sure that you downsize your baits to a degree. And so instead of throwing the, say, the soft dine XL, you may want to just throw the, the soft dine or throw the, the burner shads or the original size of the down south, uh, or the, the three and a quarter and the knocking tails. Those are all uh, sizes that you want to pay attention to. The original Paul Browns and other nice size baits got just a little bit of thickness and girth to it smaller than what the uh, fat boy floaters and sinkers are so something to, to consider if you're throwing the, the floaters and sinkers which is there's nothing wrong with that choice but if you're not getting uh, activity off of those catching fish then switch to the smaller size it's probably going to help you uh, as far as the production of the fish and finding fish and keeping fish uh, to keep them interested in eating what the baits is that you have so again working these deeper edges out here early Transitioning over to your mud and, and clump and grass shell and all that kind of stuff later in the day is going to be critical uh, during this, this cooler time frame and with the water temps and what they are. Again, majors and minors are going to be your key things and what you're going to want to be able to work and fish around. Uh, so if you're going to fish, again, try to make sure that you've got one of those that's going to be in your fishing day to help you uh, continue to be with your productivity during the fish catching time frame. Swan Lake area, another great area this time of year. Uh, you know, we fish these areas in the spring and the summer, but primarily more out in the middle toward the back shoreline where you've got, you know, more grass and a little bit of scattered shell in there. But, man, you get some really good mud, some really good grass. You're going to be up here behind these islands right here that, that separate Swan and, and Copano Bay. Uh, the one thing that you need to be aware of, there's some, there's some really good mud that's back here. I'm talking knee-deep to thigh-deep in some spots, so be aware when you fish into this area here but the ones that, you, that that this is going to be your later day later in the day area that you're one going to hit especially if the water continue to drop out of here and we start getting into those negative tides or zero tides uh, so these drops that are out here on the edges are areas that you're going to want to look at early morning you know the cut that comes through right through here uh the shell or this grass bar and shell that come all the way back around here these are all deeper edged water though so one thing that you're going to want to get, uh, continue to throw over these next few days is a smaller size bait. Why? Because of the high pressure that's going to be in place. Uh, each day that we get away from that front pushing through and that high pressure starting to kind of slide away from us, it'll, the, the fishing will continue to get just a little bit better, a little bit better, and a little bit better as the fish can continue to, to re-acumate or 
acclimate to the water temps as they begin to rise back up and that will take place the more sunshine that we get on there uh, so again your soft dines uh, your burner shads your originals in the down south and knocking tails in the three and three you know three and a quarter inch four inch those will be nice size baits to throw um, the uh, uh, Paul Browns in uh, the original is would be good to throw again if you like throwing the the, uh, the flat boys throw them just pay attention to see what your bite's doing, especially if you're, if you're fishing by yourself. Just have you a different collection of size baits that you can downsize at some point during the day if you're going to continue to throw the little bit bigger baits. Uh, these fish, sometimes what they'll do is they don't want to expend a whole lot of energy when it's cold for them, so they'll kind of just kind of hang out in the area and just wait for, for maybe one meal come by a day. So if you're, again, you want to pinpoint your majors and minors if you're able to fish in and around uh, one of those time frames that's coming up make sure that you do because that really could yield you a quality fish or maybe even several quality fish if you've got several that are stacked or close by to each other uh, so again water clarity is going to be important for you to take care of make sure that you got you know clear water clear baits darker stained water darker baits uh, so these this big blow that came in here with this front this past weekend you know it's probably going to keep these bays stirred up for a little bit but as we begin to settle and start getting calmer winds that water will begin to get really clear. Uh, it's just cold, clear water. So make sure that you're, again, make sure that you're fishing over the proper structure, over mud, clump shell, grass primarily. Uh, find those areas, find your deeper guts and edges that's adjacent to these flats like that. See if you can find and locate just a little bit of bait working somewhere on the edge, up on a flat. You know, if you don't see it, make sure that you can find you, uh, if you have a pelican or an osprey working in an area because they will see bait and they'll dive on bait. So it just lets a great indicator for you know that you do have a food source in the area that you're trying to fish.